Hey there Aquarius, thank you so much for joining me for your April 2021 Tarot and Oracle reading. I'm Infinity and I hope your first six days of the month have been great. I want to apologize for getting this out so late, but there has been a lot of um, kind of time sucking computer issues and internet issues and power issues going on and off and on since before the beginning of the month. So it has taken me longer to do um, all of the, the readings. So, and, and then having appointments and other stuff going on, it's just been very, very challenging. So again, I apologize that this has taken so long, but anyway, let's get right to it with your reading here. Aquarius. Oh, here we go. Surrender to the divine is your first card for this reading. Surrender to the divine. That is great advice. Great, great advice. Okay. So. I'm, I'm thinking that there's kind of things coming through that you're second guessing and questioning and, and maybe not having um, patience for um, the process of things and oh, there's a card. We'll keep that face down and there's another card and another card and another card. So two more cards. Um, oh, one more card. Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's see. And sometimes they come, the cards come out um, in reverse, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll stay that way. They may go right side up. So it really depends here. First card, Knight of Wands. I love this card. We've got a horse there in the background. We got fire going on. She's happy. So next card, Strength. Awesome. Next card, King of Wands. So we have Knight of Wand, Wands, King of Wands. Sorry, Knight of Wands, Strength, King of Wands. Next, we have the Hero font coming out in reverse. So let me see here. Yeah, in reverse. Next card is the Four of Swords. And next card, Four of Cups. So two fours. So I'm definitely feeling the Stargate here. <laughs> Big time. And we have our Stargate that started two days ago on 4-4. It goes through the 14th. We have our landing day. So it's 10 days plus um, the landing day comprising of 11 total days. But we can feel Stargates before and after those those times and we do get those every single month and if you're unfamiliar with what stargates are please check out my video about stargates and i will be putting out another video specifically for this month um either today or tomorrow okay um so really feeling this fire energy you know we are in um airy season um and that's definitely coming up big time with this knight of wands and this king of wands um and then the strength card i love this card i love how she's like straight down the middle with the lion and 
and the human aspects there with her chain with the with the heart because that's what strength is about it's about being or the strength card represents being strong in faith and unconditional love and and being the lion that doesn't have to be a ferocious monster that's just zen about the strength um but i'm seeing here that it's like you're you're definitely in a new place and you and you're and it feel and it you can you have been been through a change um spiritually energetically physically um but at the same time i think you know that there's more that needs to come and but we're getting down to the deeper levels where really being guided is is where it needs to like it really needs to be like you tapping in with your guides and guardians um i think in a way that you kind of dabble here and there but it's not totally consistent um like you still i'm hearing that you still feel kind of separate and alone like you're this lone strong person that doesn't have like that it's still hard for you to connect to and what when i see here with this king of wands is like Archangel um, energy. So you can fill in the blank with whatever Archangel that you may be close to or f have that energy. I definitely feel and see uh, Archangel Michael here. Um, but this hero font, this next card, this hero font card is in reverse. So, and then the next card, the Four of Swords, um, shows someone who's, like, in this nest and asleep and, like, and a lot of times I see this as, like, the sort of energy where it's, like, okay, this is good. This is where somebody is going to heal, to rest, to regroup, to connect, but I kind of see this more as this is you kind of turning off. Like you're not pushing through the layers that try to keep like that keep you in a state of like 3D distraction. This could be a like some type of like money warrior anxiety or really paying attention to the physical body as we are in this transitional period where the body is going to feel, and I'm going to get into this in the um, energy update I'm going to do for the Stargate, but we feel pressure in the body more when we're in these time, in these uh, Stargates and near new, new moons and full moons and things like that. And, um, we are pushed into uncomfortable places that which makes us kind of forces us to feel and react and act and behave and perceive and all of these things and it's really depends on what our frequency is and like how we're choosing to perceive things and to see things and digest things and consume things that are coming into our energy and our world, etc. Um, that will extend out the branches of our timelines. And we and in 
these Stargate times, we we have the opportunity. It's like it's they tend to be pretty dualistic with how we feel or what comes up and then how we process and are we quick to react? Do we um do we take time? Do we assess? Are we my do we are we mindful? Do we you know, are we judgmental? Are we coming from a place of love and understanding or, you know, those types of things. Um And so with this hero font card being that's right side up and it being in reverse uh, and then having this four of swords, then having this four of cups, uh, it's almost like It's like there's this energy about like, okay, like when is it shift and change now? Like, let's like not understanding that I'm seeing like putting the gas in the tank doesn't take you 3,000 miles. You actually have to drive those 3,000 miles and experience the journey. And as you go through the journey, your connections, your healing, your clearing, and these types of things develop and more happens. Um, but what I'm kind of picking up here is this like, it got, it went to a certain point or you went through a certain situation. Like let's say you had a healing or you with somebody like you paid, you had a healing or you went on a retreat or you did ayahuasca or you got mushrooms or you did them and you went like on a camping trip or whatever sort of thing that you're like, this was a, a, a big event where I really stepped up and I felt like I, you know, was guided to this, et cetera, et cetera. And then it was like, yeah, you, you went through this thing and we're even considering it, but it feels like, like there's still this, it's weird because it's like, you're trying to control it at the same time, wanting it to just magically happen. And your energy is really like not playing a part here. If you see these are two situations where it's the very stat stagnant energy. This one, she's literally asleep. And this one, she's just sitting there just kind of like, huh, like frustrated, confused. And there is the bowl that's coming that somebody's handing it to her, but she's like not taking it. She's not seeing it. She doesn't, she doesn't get it. Remember our card is surrender to the divine. So it's like to surrender to the divine means you have to release control, but you have to actually see it, have faith in it, be in it. And, and with this hero font, again, in reverse, it says that you, you are in the path. You are on the, the path. You're in that, like, it's, it's kind of like, again, another, another vision I'm getting. It's like opening up the, a can of whatever, but then expecting them to, like, you're barely, like, opening up the can and it's like you're like confused as to why it's not on your plate warm and ready to eat whatever's in the can like there's a process here and and like I said it's confusing the situation is that it's like you're trying to control it, but at the same time you want it to just magically be there and both of those things are out of balance 
So let's get into the, um, but I'm hearing, you know, we want to validate you and let you know you're supported and you're, um, what's the word? Um, celebrated for doing what you have already done. But I, th but I think you're thinking you somehow thought that, that things would just magically be very different, very quickly, very suddenly. And you're forgetting that they are, and they have, and they, and they do change very quickly and suddenly, but at the same time, there's also a process and an evolution to, to what needs to go down and to not decide that any one feeling or mood through this transition is how you actually are going to feel that you know very soon afterwards because if you are if you have gone through some big shift or you know ritual or healing or connection or whatever it is or you like I said, you did some something that you thought was going to be this huge like boom and there was a shake and there was changes and there was transmutation. So, you know, you're doing it. It's working. But the expectations may, are like out of alignment. They're not set in reality. And at the same time. Like I said, there's this like pressing and this checking out kind of thing. Okay, let's see what we got here. Metatron's Cube, the All and the Akashic Records. Very, very important telling. Um, symbol and messages that are kind of come with this 15 card the uh the metatron's cube card the all the akashic records and remember it says surrender to the divine so clearly some upper level knowledge awareness understanding needs to come through um and you need to take yourself and allow for that to happen so there's a lot more work that needs to be done, I think is the, you know, is, is kind of the thing here to, to start to, there's a lot more work that needs to be done on your part, but there's a lot of work where it's like, just take yourself to, to that place, get into meditation, connect with your guardian angel and your archangels and let yourself be guided to people who are in the flesh that are incarnates that can help you bridge the gap um okay but let's get into this the all and the akashic records every cell within my body has now awakened to the sacred geometry that has laid dormant within me i can access the akashic records of ancient civilizations this pattern is one of the most important of the entire universe as it holds with, within it the map or blueprint of creation. Within this geometry are all five platonic solids. It has been drawn today as you are ready to activate the sacred geometry that lies deep within your cells. It is time to delve into the sacred knowing knowings of the ancient civilizations and the Akashic records to create the energetic shifts that will allow you to enhance your life path and all who cross your path sacred geometry when we add 78 lines to the fruit of life we are bringing in the masculine energy as lines are male and spheres or circles are female it is a complex weaving of information systems by joining up and connecting each of the spheres with straight lines we end up with metatron's cube Within this pattern we are bringing together duality a male and female yin and yang and let's see practical application 
Metatron holds the key to all sacred geometry and its underlying wisdoms, the Akashic records, and ultimately the all. You can call upon him as your teacher and use it as a gateway to learning more about the hidden esoteric knowledge that lies within Metatron's cube through its complex weaving of informational systems and pertinent lines. Metatron can also be called upon when you are in need of some healing and clearing. Remember, the cube holds all five platonic solids from which all life forms are created. They are building blocks of life found within everything. Our awakening is imminent to survive the ever-changing shifts and vibrations of our planet. Our yearning to learn and know is expanding as the recognition deep within us starts to reignite and card numerology is three and crystal suggestions any su set of platonic solids crystal merkaba danbridite and morganite okay so remember when i said this card here whatever archangel that you you are close to or associate with i said i feel really strongly michael here but as i was reading that he was also pointing metatron was pointing to this he was saying you're um i'm part of this you know group obviously of archangels that is going to be reaching out to people in the different and various ways that we do and one of the ways um definitely for our um archangel metatron would be through his sacred geometry or sacred geometry in general but specifically when we see this um then that's him specifically so and again remember the first card surrender to the divine and all these cards here are saying you know you it's not like you you haven't connected to the divine and been guided by the divine because you have been i'm hearing um but you're you're like not like It's like you're like again, it's like you expected something to happen when it didn't. You kind of just like, huh, or something sh seriously shifted and changed when it did. And then whatever happened after that, you're just like, and maybe it just could be that you just got really tired and, and there's been a lot going on, a lot coming in, a lot to sort out. I'm getting that there is that as well and that you have possibly and if you haven't already then it's definitely coming where you're going to be connecting with past life information the Akashic files in one way or another that th this is going to start to come in or just the concept of it a concept of of tapping in with um with well it's called past lives but since time isn't actually linear we're actually we we lit we we can see time is stacked upon itself and tapping into different lives it's like we're tapping into it happening at that time at the same time but we say past lives because from this perspective it's it, this is our current life because this is the reality this is our our perception or first person perception here and anything else feels like it's from another time which is just easier for our human brains to process things that way but if we still understand from a conceptual point of view um from a structural structural point of view that it's not like it, it it's not like a um a plank of wood connected to another one connected to another one creating this long line this linear line of time it's it's a web that goes up and down it's so so we're here 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 and here with these different you know layers going on at the same time it's just our perception of those times are are is what is where we are or where we process things from, I guess is the best way to put it. 
Anyhow, this information for you, the Akashic Records, the information about your other lives is is what's going is kind of what is i feel um coming through here what feels like the um kind of the plug in the in the drain so let's move on to our archetypal it's the archetypes uh deck by kim Kranz. we're working with the um the selves and the tools for these readings. Um, there's also the places and the initiations or the themes that she has cards for. But like I said, we're just working with the uh, with the selves and the tools. So I'm really interested to see what we get here, Aquarius, because feels like you're a little bit stuck in your journey you need you need some help here pushing through this space that you're in like there's there's some doubt coming through on different levels doubt doubt about some you know decisions you've made maybe because it's just you're just feeling kind of out of sorts so the first card we got is the shadow it is the um, 28 card, the shadow. So that's interesting. Really interesting. I think that's really going to be helpful. If it's, if I'm kind of thinking of what it is, but we're going to read because I'm not, I, I don't know these cards well enough. They're pretty new to me still. And um, I like, I like to read from the book. There's the card right there. Okay. So the tool is the vision. Oh, very cool card. I love it. The vision. And so we have the shadow and the vision. So let's look up the, sh oh, whoopsie. Let's look up the shadow first. too far there we go okay the unspeakable the unwelcome the denied although every card in the ar archetypes deck has a shadow potential this card asks us to delve into the qualities of the shadow itself we often think that the shadow can be purified illuminated and made right through effort and achievement however it is typically the case that our lofty pursuit of ascension and perfection is the very source of shadow material itself by rejecting parts of ourselves and the world we begin to separate from the whole Rather than getting to know the qualities and the content of our shadow, we busy ourselves with avoiding its presence. This is denial. When this card appears, it is time to take inventory of those things you've been denying. When the mind responds with, no, anything but that, you are touching shadow. Find support for this deep inner work and move towards the shadow with patience and compassion. And when light, revealing unconscious aspects of the self and world. And when dark, denying unconscious aspects of the self and world. And contemplate the following scientific observation. The closer an object, a person, place, or community is to the light, the longer the shadow it casts. Very true. And... In the shadow of the gods are the very gods themselves. Reflect on this statement by James Hillman in A Blue Fire. What do you desire about yourself? Sorry. Oh, despise about yourself. By awakening... Sorry, by answering, you move towards shadow. Jeez, sorry. Red type, it's really hard to read it. Okay, um, so I think we have a really good indication here is kind of what's going on. I think that whatever situation, healing, ritual, um, thing you, you did or, or 
you were part of with something I something like that um I think that initially I think things felt really good but then what typically happens with any type of of healing of of deep ritual deep spiritual <clears throat> connection is is that that shadow side is going to appear and if we don't want to face it if we don't want to see it for what it is if we don't want to do the work to work with it if we want to deny its very existence if we want to just be light and good and move on and be ascended and all this stuff, then we're going to have a really hard time getting all of the information. Now, remember the hero font is in reverse and, and that also speaks to being impatient and not, and being in denial, not seeing everything the way that it is being presented to you, kind of seeing what you want to see. Um, and not seeing what you don't want to see or just deciding I'm just not going to look at that. I'm not going to deal with that. I'm, it's not where I want to go. Um, I just, I want the, I want all the benefits of healing and clearing, but I don't want to be a participant in all of the work and all of the, you know, getting down and dirty kind of stuff about it. And I think maybe even you're just like, I didn't even realize there was stuff that was going to be uncomfortable or painful or dirty, if you will, dark, shadowy energy for me to even deal with. I thought this was just going to blow the, all of that out of the water and I was just going to be shiny and new. And it just doesn't work that way. And, um... And so that is really something to, to think about. Um, and so whatever you have ignored, denied, if you're going to get real with yourself and surrender to the divine like that first card talks about, it's about seeing everything that has come through and deciding what you have paid attention to and what you have ignored, what you have denied, what you have let just slip, go right past you and not, you know, listen to, you know, all of the information, the advice, the counsel, the, you know, there's stuff that that's definitely fallen through the cracks because, you've been focused on certain things carrying all the weight and you know it's kind of like another metaphor another thing i'm seeing is is like stacking up a bunch of bags and containers and stuff on a stagecoach or something like this i'm seeing and you just kicking back going yeah the horses are gonna take me i don't have to I don't have to do anything except for just sit here and be taken and I'm seeing like yeah but it's a it's a bumpy road and you really should make sure that everything is tied up and that the wheels are proper and that you're giving water to the horses so they can go and you know it's not a like a, a free ride to just kick back once you've done this one thing and just think that it's everything is going to be changed is kind of what I'm seeing here. It's like we need to look all at all aspects so we can heal from all aspects, not just one aspect. Okay, so let's get into the vision with the tools. Here we go. And let me show you that card again. The vision... I love those owls, um, the hands, this is over the trees, this is a very cool card. Okay, 
the dream, the imagined, the revealed. It is said that we are each born with a unique vision, a destiny towards where we are aimed. It is also said that we forget this vision the moment we are born. Thus, we are sent on a lifelong journey of rediscovery. Such is the elusive nature of the vision. It slips away, yet it guides. It appears in strange dreams and surreal images, seemingly unattainable and pre and preposterous when we are connected to the vision we carry an inspired enchanted aliveness that others recognize we trust the world and its synchronicities we walk through the doors in into wondrous opportunities we all want to be near those with vision they emit energy more po potent than any elixir when we lose connection to the vision, life becomes dull and exhausting, lacking meaning. Bring back the mystery, bring back the dreams. And when light, potent, imaginative synchronicity, trust, and when dark, disconnected from art and dreams, listless, aimless, and you can gauge how connected you are to your vision by how tired you are since the vision feeds us energy. It affects our life force and vitality. Very true. Look at art you loved when you were young. Listen to old records and poems. These are ways to activate the vision. Very true. Um, that is why it's so important to connect back to the inner child and um, and work from and live from a balanced state of yeah being an adult but if we're coming from a state of taking care of that inner child we'll also be able to work on the shadow stuff a lot better because we are seeing it from a point of view of the inner child and we want to protect and nurture and heal and soothe the inner child and give that child what it can't get anywhere else. So if you haven't done my meditation um, on my, it's on my podcast and on my YouTube for healing the inner child and integrating with the inner child, which is, let me tell you, really, really amazing, really amazing. Please consider doing that as soon as you can. Um, so that's definitely something that came here. Um, the other thing that came through here is there's this thing about, you know, rediscovering the the destiny that it's like and that's true it's very much how i see all of our lives is that before we were born we knew exactly what we are where what our histories were what we're to do here who we'll be connected to what the ultimate and you know and look scene is what everything is in between but we are born into baby bodies and most of all of that gets buried so deep that we just need time and and we need to pay attention to this life as we're living it we can't be can you imagine how odd it would be to be a baby with all of that going on in your head like wow <laughs> i think that for us old souls as we you know get a little bit older from like toddler to little ch children, we, we can see, and for those of us who are really connected and psychic as little kids, and I was giving psychic um, messages and advice when I was like five, six, seven years old. And so it, it's kind of like second nature. It's like that just, I, I knew that there was reincarnation when I was five six years old like there was no question in my mind i knew that there was angels and archangels because i was talking to them they were talking to me um i i knew a, a whole lot of stuff that a lot of adults didn't you know still had questions about and i was like oh so it was interesting for me to try to like understand that a lot of people didn't 
or most people didn't know and see things the way that I did. So to try to reconcile that was also (laughs) an interesting perspective to have as a child. But anyway, what I'm getting here and remember, okay, so surrender to the divine. We got Metatron's cube. We got the shadow and we got vision really telling us we need to remember that there is this whole other thing going on here that we can't see all of it and we need time to digest and evolve and to have patience to surrender is to have patience it's to release control it's to have faith to have trust to be open to how things go and progress for you and it's when we get super impatient and it's when we we want to press for an outcome it's when we're upset about things the way that they are instead of being grateful for what it is um that's when things start to get um tangled up in energy bogged down things are things don't flow you get irritable angry tired and pain especially through a stargate you have to that's something to really i mean i'm just saying that's where we're at, we're at right now so something to think about um and the this is really the bottom line here is some real conscious effort on on slowing yourself down but engaging yourself too like like i said it's really interesting it's like oh yeah i'm in it i i totally believe in the process and all this stuff and it's gonna come so that's why i'm not doing anything i'm like waiting but at the same time it's like there needs to be this balance of you really engaging in this shift and meditating and 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 journaling and um putting yourself in nature bringing nature into into your world really i feel like it's like a whole lot like there's just this energy thing like the like i'm really feeling this right here really feeling this right here it's like this kind of stubborn i don't wanna and i and i'm just frustrated that i'm not seeing and feeling things differently right now or yet and um and it's like okay well what are you gonna do about it (laughs) Because you need to do something about this. And I think that looking at wherever you're looking outward at at the whys need to shift and it needs to come back. Because there's things about your situation, your history, your, your physicality, your energy, your geography, whatever it is. Since this is a general reading and I don't know you, it's a little difficult. But this is also specific at the same time it's saying you have gone to a certain level and then you have done a certain thing or even just deciding to there's something about that and then and then it's like this yes things did shift things did change you saw results but it wasn't to the place that you thought it was going to be and so that made you shift in your perspective as to into what the whole thing was instead of seeing it as a very individualistic situation that you have to to see for yourself and not compare it to anybody else or anything else and while you are you have been getting guidance and that's how you got to where you you are at the same time you're closed off to the to this like to a lot of other stuff that's coming in to pull you through this because it does take a shift in it does take it like a, what i call a changing your station it really takes it's going to take a shift in your energy your mentality 
to get yourself over this hump. Um, so, and I don't think this is, I think this is good advice here. Um, look at art that you liked when, or that you loved when you were young, listen to old records and read poems, like tap into the things that will take you back to that, like creative space that inner child space and again um the inner child meditation i think it's it keeps coming up also the body love and um body it's the it's a body love and meet your guardian angel meditation um those were both of those were like back to back within a couple days of each other in february so i will do my best to remember to put those links in the description if i forget just go to my you can drop me a comment to remind me um and go to my um go to my channel and look up um inner child and and the the video will pop up okay so lastly we're going to get into the hidden worlds oracle and let's see what we get here because this 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 oracle is always really magical really beautiful um as far as its connections and all that good stuff what we get here so that's the hidden worlds oracle Okay, there we go. The Oracle, card number 31, Oracle, Sacred Living, Spirit Speaking, Intervention. There we go. Awesome card. Awesome card for you. This is kind of, it's pretty good actually. Almost right to it. Page or card number 31. 31 page 96 sacred living spirit speaking and intervention okay to be the oracle is to be the one who stands between the divine and the earthly to help the people reconnect with the divine and to understand the language of the spirits you are learning this language at this time and finding ways to awaken their presence within your life you are one who can learn the meanings of the signs and symbols who can understand which offerings must be made and when and who can see uh discern who can discern the presence of the sacred ones as they arise to speak to the people at all times of great need the oracles have come and they have placed themselves apart from the things of our cultures from the mundane the mundi mundial the things of the world and they have sought to help us all by ensuring that the presence of the gods is felt and their desires and advice understood you perhaps once were this oracle dwelling in the mountains stirring the sacred smoke seeing the visions and sharing the messages perhaps this is another lifetime you are remembering but even so, within this lifetime, the power to read, to discern, and to understand, and to share the language of the divine is with you now. You have within you the skills of the oracle. It is time now to reawaken them and do the work. Illumination. I can hear, see, smell, feel the presence of the spirits and translate their signs for myself and for others. Wow, yeah. So we're hearing in this um, a theme here recurring with this reading. The divine, surrender to the divine, connect to the divine, um, and past lives, and, um, and having that vision. So we have the vision and we have the oracle. So, and we have the shadow. So it's definitely a thing for those of us who, uh-oh, <laughs> it's definitely a thing where those of us who are healers, seers, mystics, shaman, in that whole realm, 
we have to go through our own sh major shadow period major i mean for me it was being extremely ill and physically sick and not understanding energy in my body and being a medical medium and being a natural healer and healing people and animals and taking on the pain and the energy without understanding what that did to me i went 40 years um and plus with not really understanding that so um and that is a a typical theme for a lot of us is not or is being sick is how ha is having a lot of these or physical problems and issues that we have to get over and then we go through this whole like connecting and understanding and pulling things apart and really tapping in with the divine in a really really deep way and it really feels here that that's what's going on um and that you're just a bit stuck that you have um gotten to you you have done a lot you i think you kind of maybe ran out of gas expected like like i said expected more to happen quicker um really you know maybe you're just you're still it's still fuzzy for you it's still not super clear what you should do how you should do it who you should do it with and so there's still a lot of questions in it so you're frustrated that you haven't that these answers haven't magically appeared for you but at the same time you kind of disengaged from doing the things that will continue to take you through those um to get to those those things kind of going for you and you have to remember timing has a lot to do with stuff you know so this these just last few weeks we had the equinox that definitely um shifts a lot of energies and gets there's a there's a reverberation to that that takes it's like there's the equinox but that the equalizing energies of the equinox takes even weeks for that to settle and on top of that we have the various portals and then the full moon and the flipping into the new month and then the stargate and and so there's just a lot there's a lot of balls being thrown at you to catch and to assess and to take inventory of and to and to assimilate and transmute and and let integrate so those files can be open and brought to the surface for you to read and and delete or open up other files and all this stuff and it's just something that i notice with with people is that the timing and patience and not and wanting things to develop in a certain time frame or quicker is usually the way patience is like the hardest thing for everybody any of my clients it's always i have a problem with the like being patient patient patience and 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 under not and seeing a string of a few days or a week as being like some long period of time and it's not it's very much not especially with the energies that we're dealing with and all that's shifting and going on we have to be really patient with what we're reacting to and be patient in general um and allow ourselves to connect to the divine to bring in the information that we need allow us the time to process it don't don't uh, don't be so reactionary um especially when it comes to dealing with other people if there's other people involved um then really take a step back slow your roll slow things down especially when it comes to making any type of serious decisions any big declarations in the positive or the negative just allow things to to simmer up and to show everything that's what an oracle that's what somebody with vision does we don't react super quickly to things and energy and people and things coming in whether it is positive or negative because 
energy is a constant shifting and changing of vibrations and we can't just go with the first thing that pops up sometimes we need to see what happens with it so it's there's definitely this this thing with wanting to be in a different space but truly you're just not there yet and you need to give your yourself the time the energy and the patience to get there and do the work to get there like it says here um I am changing into, sorry, that's, I'm like, that is not what was said there. <laughs> uh, you have within you the skills of the Oracle. It is time now to reawaken them and do the work. So it's, these two energies are very different and we need to, you know, tap into that higher vibrational energy i'm not saying it's not okay to rest to heal rest clear rest you know meditate rest connect rest i'm I, i'm not we need that you absolutely need that you need ultimately to listen to your body not your mind not your ego not your control um listen to your body listen to your energy listen to your guides and guardians you do have the strength within you you are in a new place you are coming into the realizations the understanding the aha moments the abilities but we do need to travel to those shadowy places and not deny them and really live in them and not you know see ascension and connection as all one-sided of the light there is that balance that needs to be looked at there so um and the connection with those like metatron michael uh raphael gabriel and getting into sacred geometry if it's just Going online, finding a bunch of really awesome artworks, paying for the downloads, downloading them, printing them at home, or sending the files to a Staples or any kind of copy center for them to print up really cool. You don't have to invest a whole lot of money, um, but just look into that. Look into drawing um, and, and painting in general, but definitely painting or drawing out uh, Metatron's cube and other sacred geometry. There's videos online that will t tell you and help you um, in how to do that. Just you need to do exercises and things that is going to plug you in and you need to stop pressing on what hasn't happened yet. Or, you know, if you expected, you know, 100% and you're like, okay, I'm, it's more like 80 or 50, then it's like, okay, let's be great, grateful for that 80 or 50 or whatever and just do other things and just know it's just not there yet. But it's definitely going to happen. And again, turn the, the um, attention inwards, not outwards. Um, not your frustration, not your adulation, not your jealousy that other people can see, feel, hear, do other things when it comes to this kind of stuff and you're not there yet and be frustrated about it because then it's just never going to happen. So we just need to allow for, for the natural progression of your evolution to take place. Lovely Aquarius, but all in all this is a really great reading just telling you it's just time to shift things a little bit and let april be the the time for you where you allow these shift to take these shifts to take place that you move into a place of higher perspective and awareness when it comes to your development and your ascension your soul connections and letting divine letting the divine come in for you and inviting them in actively engaging with them that is what this month of april is all about is the spiritual connections with our guardian angels and archangels first and foremost and just in general with our spirit tribe that is kind of the theme of of 
of this stargate and of this month so it's really pressing and you've got the four fours here and that again is telling me these energies are really coming in for you with this stargate S see it from a positive grateful um open perspective and you'll have a much happier time of it than being frustrated uh, at the progress of where things are how things developed or any of that stuff that isn't you know how what fit expectations and i will say lastly if you go forward and you and you're guided to a healer a shaman a psychic a mystic whoever it is that you may be guided to work with just remember to see them as them and what they can do and let them inspire you but don't compare yourself and also don't put bigger expectations on them than what it is that they're offering and what it is that they're saying that they can do for for you keep keep yourself grounded while you let the magic come in and while you let the magic flow out of you all right aquarius with that said i'm gonna bid you adieu at this time happy april thanks for being here please remember to like share subscribe if you haven't already to my channel i'd love to have you here i'm going to be doing a lot more in the future with meditations and lives uh coming up and i'd love for you to be here and leave a comment. Let me know how this resonated for you. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.